Today we're moving on to lesson 4.2. We're going to be multiplying by 5 and 10 today. So before we get started, I'm already thinking about um, what I know about 5 and 10. I can easily skip count by 5s, 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on. And I can easily skip count by 10s, 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. So they are what I call nice numbers. They're really easy to count on. So that's probably going to be the one, the main strategy that I'm going to be using today to solve my problems. But we'll kind of take a look at different strategies as we go along. So we're going to be learning about Marcel. He is making six doll-sized banjos. He needs five strings for each banjo. How many strings does he have in all? So we have a picture of our banjo on the side there. So I can picture six of those, doll size meaning that they are small, and I'm going to highlight those, that, those key pieces of information um, just by underlining there. It's important to do that when you're solving math problems, especially when you have a lot of words involved. It's good to kind of point them out so that they stand out to you. I'm going to underline the word words in all, just like yesterday in our problems. In all, we said could either be a multiplication sentence or an addition sentence. But the important thing that I'm noticing, do you remember that key word that lets me know that I'm going to have equal groups? Can you find it in the problem? It's the word each. That's important there because they will each have five. We'll just undo that and try that again. So we have our keywords highlighted now. So now we're going on to some strategies that we can use to solve these problems. So first I want to think about how many banjos is he making in all? And we know that there he's going to be making six banjos. So we'll type that in there. And we know that he needs five strings. So now that we have that all figured out, we're ready to go on to some problem solving. So one strategy we can do, just as we mentioned in the beginning of our lesson, is we can skip count by fives. So if we think there are six groups, five in each group. So I have my six groups here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I can count on six times by five to get my answer. So go ahead and give that a try. And when we skip counted six times, we got 30. Remember, whenever we have a multiplication problem, we think six groups of five. And there we had it right there. So he needs 30 strings in all. Okay, so now let's go on to another problem using a number line. If we take a look over at our tools for multiplication, um, a number line is one strategy that we can use, and it goes along with skip counting. So now we have the strings that he's using. We have 10 inches per string. So each string is 10 inches long. How many inches of string will Marcel use for his banjo? So if I'm looking up here, I know that he needed five strings. And now I know that they each are 10 inches long. So here are my five groups, my five strings, and they're each 10 inches. So I have to figure out the product there. We have our two factors, five and 10. So just as we learned where we have five groups of 10, we can also think of it as five jumps with 10 in each jump. So that's what we're going to think about as we go. We have our number line here. It's divided by increments of five. So we're going to be drawing five jumps of 10. So we'll go ahead and choose that. I can guarantee you my line is not going to be the best, but we'll give it a try here. <laughs> so five jumps of 10. So we have 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. So he's going to need I don't know where that went, but that's okay. We landed at 50. Um, so he needs 50 inches of string. Okay, so here if we land on 10, then we jumped again, we landed on 20. We jumped again, we landed on 30, 40, and then 50. And we know that five times 10 is 50. And so he'll need 50 inches of string. Now, we call these multiples of 10 um, because 
any product that has 10 as one of its factors is going to be a multiple of 10. So if you're thinking about factors here, we know that 20, 30, 40, 50, those are all increments or multiples of 10. Okay, so we often use that term. Okay, so now we're ready to go on to our next problem. And for our next problem, we're going to be using a different strategy now. I've added that over here to our tool belt, our tools for multiplication. We're going to be using a bar model. This is just another way of looking at your equal groups and then the different num the numbers to go in each group. So we're back to Marcel, and he is now buying packages of string for his banjo. So Marcel bought three packages of string. You can see them right here. Each package costs 10 cents. How did, um, or how much did the packages cost in all? So again, I have my information, my three is important here, 10 cents. I'm seeing that same word each, and I'm seeing in all. So I'm thinking this is probably going to be multiplying. One strategy you can use is a bar model. Think of it as a chocolate bar, just like the Hershey's chocolate bar, how it has um, spaces and it's divided into, into pieces. You can kind of think of it like that. So here are his three packages of string. Now, when you're using a bar model, your each square is going to count as a group. So think of it as three groups of 10. So we're gonna put that to the side. Three groups of 10. And we would write it just like that. So. Just like yesterday when we drew our, our circles with counters, this would be the same thing. This would have been a circle with 10 counters in it. This would have been a circle with 10, and this would have been a circle with 10. So it's just another way of looking at that, okay? So whenever you're making a bar model, your number of groups, then that will be how many squares you need. So we'll go ahead and we have, we're thinking in our mind, we have three and there are 10 cents per, it's 10 cents per uh, package. And we know that three times 10, we can count by 10, three times, skip count, and we have 30 cents in all. And so we have to make sure that we're um, labeling that. Okay. And it's important to do that. Let's see if I can stretch this out and make it a little bit bigger. Okay. And then we have so each of them cost 30 cents, or total 30 cents. Okay, so I should have probably just copied the 30 one, but that's okay. All right, so there we go. So we know we have 30 cents in all for, for him to, to have all that string. Um, so our next part that we're going to do is just practice with our number line format which is very similar to skip counting. How can you use this number line to find eight times five? Right away, as soon as I look at every any multiplication problem, I think eight groups, five in each group. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on my number line. Let's undo for just a moment here. We have to restart here. Okay, here we go. So we have eight jumps with five in each jump. So five, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That time it stayed. Um, so we landed at 40. Now we can also um, just count in our mind. Uh, obviously, we wouldn't be using a number line for this if we're trying to find out a problem really quickly. And so we would count by five, eight times just in our mind. And now we're going to um, answer our question. How can you use this um, number line to find eight times five? So I'm going to say um, first, I will start at zero on the number line. It's always good to use these types of words, first, next, last, when you're giving instructions, when you're explaining something of how you did something. Okay, so then I will jump eight times with five spaces for each jump. And then I'm going to give a sample. 
a little example here. It doesn't hurt to use numbers then when you're finished. 5, 10, 15, 20, 5, 30, 40. And then we'll put last. I landed on 40. So that is the product, this problem. Okay, so that was our explanation in words. Of course, there are many different ways you could have written this. Um, when we were in the classroom, we often talked about that. So as long as you're explaining where you began, the steps that you took to solving it, and then of course where your, your answer ended up. All right, so that was um, another type of strategy we learned today. We learned a, the bar model strategy. We reviewed our number line strategy, which is essentially skip counting. So those are ways that you can solve problems. Today, when you work on your Google form, you'll be practicing skip counting by fives and tens to solve your problem. Remember, always think if you're having some trouble, think whenever, whatever your first factor is, think that's how many groups. And then the next factor is that's how many are in each group. So three groups of 10. That will help you as you're working through your problems. Uh, good luck, and if you need any help, you may gladly message me in Schoology. I will see you tomorrow for Lesson 4.3.